I wonder how many people who fly out from Melbourne Airport realise that minutes after they take off, their flight path takes them over an area that was the location of the first officially recognised controlled power flight in Australia. On the morning of March 18, 1910, the famous magician Harry Houdini prepared his biplane in a paddock on a property eight kilometres south of the small township of Diggers Rest. Houdini, a world-class showman, was a man that recognised the power of publicity. He invited 30 people to witness his attempt, including a reporter from the Argus newspaper, who was also officially one of the timekeepers. During the morning, he made three flights, which were filmed and photographed. On one of these flights, he was in the air for 7 minutes and 37 seconds. Reaching a height of 100 feet and flew a distance of 6 miles, which included a controlled circuit of Plumpton's paddocks. It's a record which is hotly debated to this day. Some argue that Englishman Colin de Frey's flew a Wright model aircraft on December 9, a year earlier. That flight at Sydney's Victoria Racecourse was witnessed by a crowd of nearly 250 people, including newspaper men. He flew in a straight line for 115 yards before crashing. It's argued that the flight was still controlled throughout and therefore de Vries qualifies as being the first. Another report states the day before Houdini's flight, Fred Custance also piloted a monoplane in South Australia for 5 minutes and 25 seconds. Conflicting reports and lack of reliable witnesses has made that claim suspect. On the outskirts of town, located on private property, is the former Army radio transmitting buildings. Erected by the Australians in 1944, they are the only significant wartime remnants remaining at Digger's Rest. Radio traffic from these buildings were instrumental in keeping contact with Allied forces in the South Pacific during the Second World War. Digger's Rest is 28 kilometres west of Melbourne and can be found just off the Calder Highway. The residents of the town are determined that Houdini's achievement is not forgotten because they've erected a monument celebrating the event. The main street has only a few buildings fronting onto the old Calder Highway, including the post office which was opened in June 1860, a restaurant and a modern railway station linking Melbourne with Bendigo. Despite the appearance of this being a sleepy little town, the surrounding area has a growing population with the continuing construction of new housing estates, replacing farming properties. The Diggers Rest Hotel was built in 1845. In those days it was put to good use by travellers heading to the gold fields of Bendigo and Mount Alexander. Unfortunately it was gutted by fire in 2008. There's speculation that the blaze was the work of an arson, but no charges have ever been laid. Exploring the ruins, I find it sad to see a building with so much local history being left in such a bad state. But clearly, it would cost far too much money to return it to its former condition. I remember the hotel because in 1972 it was where my mates and I bought our beer supply before we attended the Sunbury Pop Festival. Just five kilometres north of Diggers Rest is George Duncan's farm where the famous Sunbury Pop Festivals were located. The first was held on the Australia Day long weekend in 1972. The three-day event was so popular 
that it was held the same time each year until 1975. It has often been referred to as Australia's Woodstock. Thousands of young people enjoyed the music from the best Australian bands of the time. The most famous being Billy Thorpe and the Aztecs. Other notable bands included Max Merritt and the Meteors, Chain and Carson. During the following four years, bands from overseas were also invited to play. The most famous being Deep Purple, who performed in front of a well-behaved crowd. The landscape that surrounds the organ pipes had its origins a million years ago when the Holden volcano located to the west erupted and lava flooded the valley. For the next million years the forces of nature worked on the countryside and the surface started to crack. This process allowed a new watercourse to further erode the landscape. We now call that watercourse Jackson's Creek. As the creek cut into the landscape it gouged out this new valley. Over time the softer rocks were washed away leaving the columns known as the organ pipes. Further down the valley is the tessellated pavement, which is all that is left of another set of columns. These have been worn away by the creek. Some rocks in this valley contain fossils that are 400 million years old. This unusual rock formation, made of basalt, is known as the Rosetta Rock. The next time you're travelling the Calder Highway and you see other turn-offs to country towns, Take the time to investigate. You may be surprised to find there's more history to be discovered along the way.